Today's podcast is brought to you by the Bioceuticals Integrative Oncology Workshop with Dr. Lee Zalchula. This full-day program will run between the dates of the 20th and 28th of July across Melbourne, Sydney, Gold Coast, Adelaide and Perth. The intensive class will explore key concepts and therapeutic integrative strategies for breast, prostate, colon and lung cancers, as well as how to support toxicities associated with conventional treatment. By the end of the day, you'll be able to confidently implement this important aspect of patient care into your clinical practice. For more information and to register for this critical event, please visit the Bioceuticals website at bioceuticals.com.au. This is FX Radio and I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook. And with me on the line today is Claudette Casey Freeman, who's a research nutritionist and writer. Now, Claudette has extensive nutritional and biochemical experience and currently writes many freelance articles for health magazines, manufacturers of nutritional supplements and health companies. In the past, Claudette has assisted in the management of a successful weight loss program, as well as designed and developed a product label on the shelves of retail stores. She currently specialises in using food as a medicine to aid in a plethora of disease conditions and prevention. And in addition, Claudette was awarded an advanced level general certificate of education in psychology and sociology, which has helped her to fully understand and appreciate her clients to successfully achieve their maximum potentials by working with them through their own unique journey into health, rather than using generic formulations of diet and food ideas. So welcome, Claudette. I really am excited to speak to you today. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, and, uh, and likewise. Claudette, tell me about your history. You, you come from England, as do I. Tell me about your early childhood and, and what led you down the path to choose nutrition or nutritionist as a career. Um, Yeah, look, uh, it's a really difficult one, actually. Yes, I came from the UK and um, we we actually came from a very poor background. Um, My mother had four children and um, we didn't, we had sort of, didn't have a father throughout our life. And um, so we were, my mum was very poor. But um, she always put food, really good food, on the on the table. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of stews, good dumplings, and a lot of warm cooked foods. So food was really emphasised in our home. And um, but look, I, my my background is I eventually um, came from the trading floor in investment banking. Um, I worked myself up on the trading floor with J.P. Morgan for about five years and Barclays for six years. And uh, eventually just found myself preaching about natural medicines and nutrition and and life in general. Um, And then I realized, well, I'm not doing following my heart and passion, yet here I am preaching to others. So I literally handed the keys in when I was 33 and never looked back. I I left um, and um, came out to Australia, but I there was obviously no investment banking out here. And I literally shut my eyes to, to point a location of where I wanted to move to. Mm. So I literally shut my eyes and, and ended up picking Brisbane. And I flew out here with, I knew nobody, knew nobody out here or, or of anybody. And um, came out to Brisbane and I thought, well, there's not much investment banking out here and I certainly don't want to to continue that so I would wrote a list down of everything close to my heart and nutrition and food was right at the top of it and then um, found my journey into um, and did a degree with Endeavour. Claudette you recently won a BEMA award that's a Bioceuticals Integrative Medicine Award at the 2015 Bioceuticals Symposium didn't you? Tell me about that. Yes It was really nice to have been recognised for all the hard work that I've done. Not that I expected it at all, but um, I was very surprised when um, you announced that I was Student of the Year. 
Well, I've got to say it's due to your passion because um, you've also, uh, apart from your education, you're heavily involved. In, in, indeed, you're the originator of the Nutritional Medicine Practitioners Network on Facebook. Tell me about how that evolved. How it was, how was it born? Oh, well, originally, um, I noticed there was one for naturopathic, and um, I just felt that we deserved one of our own, and we were being singled out quite often. And um, I then thought, okay, I, I feel that we need one of our own. So I set it up without even thinking about it, and. I actually thought within a week I'd be deleting it because nobody would want to join and but it just it just took off immediately and thought um, now we we expand to about 4 to 500 new students per semester and um, wow. it's just took off like a rocket like a rocket so nothing that I did yeah like no, nothing that I expected so tell me what what sort of things come up on that Facebook page? Okay, like, um, basically it's just to integrate everybody with professionals out there in the health industry. So not just nutritional medicine practitioners, but we have writers, we have magazine editors, we have everybody, biochemical people, we have from all different um, universities, we have lecturers on there and, and really top academics as well. And, and this is worldwide. And I feel it's such a great platform for students to come and see how it is not only throughout the world, but we it integratedly with health, the whole entire health industry as well. So how we're acknowledged out there in the field and um, how we're recognized and they can learn and ask questions, provide research with each other. Um, and also, it's a great community where everybody can feel comfortable about discussing their their needs and requirements or if, if they feel they need to discuss a client, obviously the names are withheld, but they can do it. It's a safe place to be able to do that and feel comfortable about setting up their own practices and stuff. And it's a, a safe place because it's a closed um, page, right? You have to be uh, yes. admitted. Yes, it's a closed page. Um, you have to be uh, a medicine practitioner or biochemical expert to be able to join and just make discussions on there. We don't answer questions to the public. Yeah. And if we do find any public members on there, then they're immediately... Um, deleted and we send them a practitioner in their area. So I'll just say for the listeners, that's the Nutritional Medicine Practitioners Network on Facebook. Yes, correct. So tell me more about um, your education. What are your plans for the future? Um, well, look, I, I, after the degree, I'm um, at a loss of what to do and since winning the um, the award, um, I've kind of, because I won the scholarship, I feel that obviously I've got to use it. So I'm now looking at doing a master's degree. Just got to decide whether I would like to do that in um, education, public health, or uh, counselling and psychotherapy. So um, those are my sort of main choices of, of, of what to go for and, and I've just got to make a decision of which area would benefit me more in integrating with the degree. Claudette, I need to ask you a question about nutritionists and, and the restriction on what nutritionists are allowed to prescribe and that is nutritionally based supplements as, a ho as opposed to herbals and where it stands with mixed formulae that have got both nutrients and herbs. Is there legislation around this or is it an arbitrary restriction? Yeah, look, that's a really difficult one. The universities strictly say that we cannot prescribe any um, supplements with herbs in. But um, as most of the practitioner products out there in the field have got herbals in them, 
and um, it's very difficult to actually get by without using them. So there are different things, obviously, that we can prescribe. I think for me, I think it's important to look at the therapeutic values and the amount in them. For instance, if if the product is mostly herbal and they are high therapeutic amount, then I feel that nutritionists should not prescribe them. But if they are just used as cofactors or simply aiding a function for the actual nutrient, then I feel that that is fine. But I think that's my own personal opinion. Different people on the page and and practitioners have different opinions about it, and um, yeah, so it's it's a line where we're all drawing ourselves. But that's my my personal opinion. What do you see the future holds for nutritionists, and and what are the challenges that I think they're going to need to face in the future? There are going to be a lot of challenges for nutritional medicine practitioners. Firstly, is to the problem that we have is to gain recognition. And um, to gain recognition in the health industry because we want to be recognized for our quality and also the level of academic that we, we have in the health industry. That's really hard to be able to decipher at the moment. The other thing is um, is to be able to distinguish ourselves as professionals as well, because we're often diluted um, in in out there in the in the public with other nutritionists um, of the dietitian aspect, and also health coaches and nutritional coaches who have very little qualification. So at the moment, it's very very difficult. And whether registration will help that is another whole topic of discussion. But at the moment, we all feel like we're being diluted in the industry and that we're just not being recognised for the academic level that we have. Claudette, I need to ask you about social media because you are heavily involved on Facebook in a closed page. But what about social media in public pages? How important is it? But what dangers do you see in using social media? Uh, There are huge dangers um, in using social media. Uh, The first thing that we really need to be careful of, uh, that there are so many fictitious account pages out there um, there are a lot of people who claim to be people who they are not. And we need to be really, really careful of, of that because um, qualifications and discussions on the, on the page can bring in lots of different clients as well as a lot of um, personal information. So the privacy policy of discussing clients needs to be really, really careful. And obviously on social media, it can be shared and there are implications against that. So there are, we need to be very, very careful with that aspect, which is why I always place a disclaimer, very long one um, on the group page um, with all, the, all of the policies and um, the jurisdictions on that. Claudette, thank you so much for joining us today, giving us an insight into the excitement that you face and the challenges indeed um, facing nutritionists' education. And I've got to say a huge, well-deserved congratulations on winning the Beamer Award for Student of the Year. You're so well done, and I wish you every success for the future and for your future education. Thank you so much, Andrew. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. This is FX Radio, and I'm Andrew Whitfield-Cook. 